Have you ever wondered what you would be like if you had a different mom or dad? The answer is simple. Nothing. That is, if your dad had eaten a different burger the year you were born, you would not have been born. As Sherlock Holmes said in the famous TV series, the world is woven together from billions of life threads tied together. What we call a premonition is but a stirring of the web. If one could influence the shaking of each thread, the future would become predictable, as inescapable as math. Pathetic and completely wrong. There are two reasons for this. In the first half of the 20th century, there was a mega epic battle between Einstein and Bohr. Einstein believed that all phenomena in the universe were deterministic. That is, they could be calculated. To do this, all you need to do is to figure out and write down all the laws of nature. Thus, in order to predict the future, it would be enough to have one super powerful computer at hand. However, Einstein stumbled over quantum mechanics, which was being actively developed by Niels Bohr at the time. You see, at the quantum level, there are quantities that cannot be known in advance because they are inherently indeterministic, or in other words, fundamental randomness. This made Einstein very angry. He rejected the uncertain quantum nature of the universe and believed that quantum mechanics was based on some hidden variables that physics did not yet know about. In the letters of Niels Bohr, he wrote that God does not play dice. And in this context, Einstein was using the concept of a pantheistic God, not a personal anthropomorphic creator God, as most atheists think. That is, when speaking of God, he was referring to the universe. In those distant times, it was impossible to conduct the kind of experiment that could have put an end to this controversy once and for all. Einstein died convinced that he was right. However, with the development of technology, scientists conducted a bunch of different tests and 100% again and again confirmed the rightness of quantum mechanics. But Einstein's supporters each time had one last objection about how random the parameters of these experiments were. And it must be said, it was a fair one. And yet on May 9, 2018, researchers from Big Bell Test decided to resort to one last argument, human free will. Big Bell Test developed an online game available on a wide variety of platforms in which users must create the longest possible random sequences of zeros and ones. But that's not all. People are too predictable. That's why each individual player is confronted with a machine learning algorithm Oracle, which makes sure that the sequences are not too obvious. The program constantly adjusts to your behavior and makes you think about how you can act more randomly, as well as adjusts the timing, which gives the system a huge amount of results. Despite its apparent simplicity, the game is very high quality. It maximizes the elements of engagement and competition. Oracle really wants to beat and move on to new and new levels thanks to the distribution in social networks. The game has become really popular. For the purposes of the experiment, the results of a thousand players were used. On November 30, 2016, during the 12 hours during which the measurements were taken, players generated a data stream of 1,000 bits per second, amounting to 97 million binary random numbers. According to scientists, an additional blow to the principle of locality was caused by the fact that the players were not connected to each other because they were in completely different places on the globe. Maximum randomness was also ensured by the fact that the players did not know where and when the measurements would be made and whether their contribution would be involved in principle, since only a part of the huge array of random numbers was used for the final measurements. The results of the online game were sent to 12 laboratories located on five continents for 13 experiments. Quantum entanglement was tested on photons, individual atoms, and groups of atoms. As expected, the researchers found not the slightest evidence of the presence of Einstein's hidden variables. The probability that the principle of locality is valid in our universe tends to zero. Local release has once again lost out to quantum mechanics. In their conclusions in the Big Bell test, physicists write, if free human will exists, then there are also physical phenomena that are actually random and cannot be predicted. Thus, the most desperate followers of Einstein have the last chance to claim that there is no free will and that all events in the universe are predetermined. However, this is already from the realm of metaphysics. Perhaps even Einstein himself would not approve of this. And whatever Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote, but Sherlock used induction, not deduction. Based on the above, you should conclude right now that our entire reality is based on an element of true randomness. And what's more, 
randomness is the fundamental principle of our universe. As Lincoln used to say, books are needed to remind a man that his original thoughts are not so new. So here too, intentionally or not, Sherlock's mouth is embedded with an idea proposed in 1814 by French mathematician Pierre-Simon Marquis de Laplace. Laplace proposed a mental experiment that went something like this. We can view the present state of the universe as a consequence of its past and a cause of its future. A mind which, at any given moment, would know all the forces that set nature in motion and the position of all the bodies of which it is composed, if it were also sufficiently extensive to subject this data to analysis, could embrace by a single law the motion of the greatest bodies of the universe and of the smallest atom. For such a mind, nothing would be obscure and the future would exist in its eyes, just as the past did. If you dig to the heart of the matter, Sherlock is saying exactly the same thing. And it is strange, because the lack of understanding of the basics of quantum mechanics to a private investigator can be forgiven, but an error in logic is not. Even if the universe were deterministic and could be calculated, the existence of a super powerful mind or computer that calculates the future would still be impossible. Why not? because of the paradox. So, imagine that a supermind exists and that it can calculate the future based on the position of all the atoms in the universe at the moment. And let's say that for every minute, it calculates the future two minutes ahead. But as soon as this superintelligence makes its first prediction, it will already contain its next prediction, which will contain a prediction about the next prediction, and so on. And if time in our universe is infinite, then already after the first calculation, the supermind will have to know the whole history of the universe until the end of the ages. But this implies infinite memory, power, and speed of calculations, which is fundamentally impossible in the material world. As you see, predetermination, fate, or destiny have nothing to do with reality. And the question that it is you who will be conceived and born is purely a matter of chance. It was not predetermined but how much of it was not predestined? How likely is it that it was you who was born in the first place? But if you consider the most obvious factors, such as the probability of your parents meeting, given the total number of men and women on Earth, and the number of persons of the opposite sex, your parents could have met. Plus, considering the likelihood that your parents would want to meet again and have a relationship, and finally, the fact that a particular sperm would combine with a particular egg to form a new life, and also, given the chance that your ancestors could have had children, your chance of being born is 1 in 10 to the power of 2,685,000. By the way, the number of atoms in the observable universe is only 10 to the 80th power. It's like if 2 million people were tossed a dice with a trillion faces and each person got the same number. And that's without taking into account an infinite number of other non-obvious variables. Even with the above factors, the probability of you being born is below the margin of error that can be neglected. If conception had occurred a second earlier or later, you would no longer be born. Yes, statistically speaking, you should not exist. You should not have been born. Yet here you are, watching this video. Thank you for your curiosity.